It's that time again. This is Katni with your weekly Python on Hardware News. Every week, we put together the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. It is available through adafruitdaily.com. Head over to sign up and see all of the past and current newsletters, or tune in each week to hear what's going on. Adafruit is working with the team to open safely as we continue to navigate COVID-19. We are following the same safety protocols we have been since the beginning and will continue to do so. At this time, regular non-COVID related orders are shipping, but expect delays as we ramp up. We are working hard to get more items in stock, so if there is an out of stock item you're looking to purchase, sign up to be notified when it's back in stock. For more information, visit adafruit.com slash open safely. The Seed Studio WIO terminal is now officially supported by CircuitPython. The Seeds WIO Terminal is an Atmel SAMD 51 based microcontroller with wireless connectivity supported by a Realtek RTL 8720DN, which supports both Bluetooth and Wi Fi, providing a backbone for IoT projects. The RTL 8720DN isn't currently supported, and therefore Bluetooth and Wi Fi functionality are not currently available in CircuitPython. The WIO terminal itself is equipped with a 2.4 inch LCD screen, onboard IMU, microphone, buzzer, micro SD card slot, light sensor, and infrared emitter. Details available on hackster.io and circuitpython.org. The first alpha release of CircuitPython 6.0 is out now. It is a renumbered version of 5.4.0 because I squared C slave module and the class have been renamed to I squared C peripheral. This is a breaking change. It's an alpha because the developers may rename or remove additional APIs. It is relatively stable. Feature-wise, this release adds basic lower power support when in time.sleep and initial ESP32 S2 support. The lower power work changed timekeeping and may have introduced bugs. Please use 5.3.0 if you need a stable version of CircuitPython. New features and improvements since 5.4.0 Beta 1 include SDIO and SD card IO for native SD card support available on SAMD51 and Spresence. Improved performance and bus I.O. support for ESP32 S2, support for the SAMe54, a number of bug fixes, and improved Dutch, German, Brazilian, Portuguese, and Spanish translations. Thank you to everyone who was involved in this release. Check out this watch running CircuitPython based on the Open Hardware Summit 2020 badge. For more information, check out Sedacious on Twitter. SciPy 2020, the 19th Annual Scientific Computing with Python Conference, is a virtual conference being held July 6th through 12th, 2020. The annual SciPy conference brings together over 900 participants from industry, academia, and government to showcase their latest projects, learn from skilled users and developers, and collaborate on code development. The full program consists of five days of tutorials and talks, July 6th through 10th, and two days of developer sprints, July 11th and 12th. Visit scipy2020.scipy.org to learn about the event. Humble Bundle is offering a pay-what-you-want offer for Python learning text with $1,400 worth of materials. A portion of each sale goes to the Python Software Foundation. Details available at humblebundle.com. In this week's CircuitPython Deep Dive livestream, Scott streamed his work with the ESP32 S2 SPI bug and discussed networking. Check out the latest video and past videos at adafru.it slash deepdive. Liz ported the Blink a Jump game from using an Adafruit Pi badge to using an LED matrix display. Check it out at Blitz City DIY on Twitter. Development on the OpenBook e-ink reader continues with a new revision out in the last week. Joey writes, I've assembled and tested one, written a system test script and a sketch to burn the bootloader using a Feather M0, completed a first draft of the documentation, and I'm almost done with the kit space bomb. The goal for these is to sell the bare PCBs on Tindy for folks who want to build at home. I had hoped to have that done by the end of June, but pandemic drama has slowed me down. Still, they should be available by next week. Watch the Tindy store for updates. Details on hackaday.io. Thea wrote up a blog post about designing Winterbloom's Big Honking Button, a Eurorack module running CircuitPython. Check it out at blog.thea.codes. Anthony posts to Twitter, Aquarium automation consisting of an Adafruit Feather NRF52840 Express dev board plus four feather wings running CircuitPython. For more details, check out Vacant Third Man on Twitter. This project is an Espressive Systems ESP32 S2 Saola running CircuitPython 6.0.0 Alpha with the ESP32 SPI library to also use an Adafruit Airlift feather wing for Wi Fi. Python vs. Code posts to Twitter using the new PyLane language server in Visual Studio Code to get auto imports. Davey posts to YouTube and Twitter a review of the PewPew M4 game development platform. 
In this week's episode of Microcontrollers with Kinger North, learn about using ultrasonic sensors with CircuitPython on Arduino, available on YouTube. FreeCodeCamp has added four new Python certifications. Details available at freecodecamp.org. After Les's post about using requests in JSON in Python, All About Code posted to Twitter testing out a new requests block in EduBlocks to create a simple COVID-19 tracker. Linux market share climbed to an all-time high in June. Details on omgubuntu.co.uk. PowerStamp is a USB-C power management module that provides power source management and charge control for IoT devices, programmable in MicroPython. Available on Kickstarter. For details, check out MyronWW on Twitter. MakerFabs posts to GitHub, a guide to building a MicroPython TTS weather broadcast based on ESP32 and audio. PDB Perks posts to Twitter, porting an Altair simulator to ESP8266 using MicroPython, an OLED display, and IR for GPIO, capable of octal data entry. Learn about web scraping crypto prices with Python using Beautiful Soup on TowardsDataScience.com. KoanLPy is a Python package for natural language processing of the Korean language. Details on KoanLPy.org. Learn how to create and modify PDF files in Python in this tutorial on RealPython.com. Radu posts to Medium how to get free historical and livestock prices and FX rates using Python. Learn Python in 10 minutes a day in this series on TowardsDataScience.com. Make your code great with Python style. Learn some tricks to write better Python code in this post on LiveCodeStream.dev. The number of CircuitPython-supported microcontrollers and single-board computers continues to grow. There was one new board added this week, the Seed Studio WIO Terminal. Are you interested in adding a new board to CircuitPython? Check out the Adafruit Learn system for a series of guides about getting your board added to CircuitPython and CircuitPython.org. There are three new Python and hardware-related guides in the Adafruit Learn system this week, including In the latest translated guide, Circuit Playground Express Piano de Limones, learn in Spanish how to build a light-up capacitive touch-tone piano complete with fruit in this guide from Alvaro Figueroa. Learn how to write a side-scrolling video game based on the Chrome browser's jumping dinosaur game Easter egg designed for the Adafruit Pi badge. Use CircuitPython's Display.io module to create sprites, text, and other game features to build your own game in this guide from Liz Clark. The current number of CircuitPython libraries is 262. This includes both the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries and the CircuitPython community libraries. There was one new library this week. Adafruit CircuitPython BH1750, as well as a number of updated libraries. As always, visit circuitpython.org libraries to download the latest version of the Adafruit CircuitPython bundle. Included in this week's updates from the CircuitPython team, Dan's continuing to work on an implementation of underscore BLEIO that supports the HCI Bluetooth protocol available on the ESP32 used in our airlift boards. He has first light. He can talk to the ESP32 and ask it simple commands. He's also fixed a number of small bugs in various BLE libraries, and there are still more to fix. Lucian worked on creating a timer management system for STM32, which allows various different modules in the port to share a pool of timer peripherals. The system allows modules to prioritize certain kinds of timers based on whether they have pins exposed, aiming for the minimum number of conflicts possible between the internal timer use, such as modules like Pulse Out and RGB Matrix, and external use, such as PWM Out. He also worked on some miscellaneous bug fixes to modules and peripherals affected by this new timer mediator, and fixed a crash related to Simplex SPI on the STM32. Melissa ported the PyPortal library over to Blinka so that many of the PyPortal examples work with little modification. As she's ported over examples, she's also found small bugs in the PyPortal library and Display.io for Blinka that she's slowly been fixing, which is leading to a more stable Display.io for Raspberry Pi and other single board computers. Scott started to work on network-related libraries and brainstorming what the API should be for CircuitPython on the ESP32-S2. He's also hoping to reduce the memory overhead in making JSON requests because they are very common. He may also add memory debugging and monitoring APIs to better track how many allocations occur and what size for a section of code. EuroPython 2020 this year will be an online conference from July 23rd to 26th. Attending the conference days will require a ticket, and participating in the sprints will be free. Check out ep2020.europython.eu for details. PyCon AU has announced that they are holding PyCon Line AU in August. Check out 2020.pycon.org.au for more information. PyGotham is a New York City-based eclectic Pi-centric conference covering many topics. 
Pi Gotham TV is taking place October 2nd and 3rd, 2020, with a single track of talks presented online. The call for proposals is now open at cfp.pygotham.tv. Visit 2020.pygotham.tv for more information. PyCon India will be held online from October 3rd through 5th, 2020. A call for proposals is now open through the 14th of August. Visit in.pycon.org slash 2020 for details regarding the CFP and the conference. Translating CircuitPython is now easier than ever. Translations make the project more accessible to a broader range of folks. Adding or improving translations is a great way to get started contributing to the project. With the help of a fellow open source project WebLate, we're making it even easier. You can create a new account just for WebLate or sign in using other sites like Google or GitHub. If you write another language, visit adafru.it slash translate cp, sign in, and start translating. Looking for more Python on hardware all week? Join the Adafruit community on Discord and check out the help with CircuitPython and CircuitPython channels. We're over 21,000 strong and continuing to grow. You'll find a supportive, positive community filled with like-minded folks. Join at adafru.it slash discord. And that is your Python on hardware news for this week. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter or tune in again next week.